Stardew Valley is a very community-focused game that reflects a lot of trends and impulses of modern life. Ideas like cottage core and tiny houses, minimalism, the press to grow our own food as much as possible and shop local, that are often based in the real-life desire to help ourselves and our communities and the environment as a whole survive what feels like constant crises through self-sufficiency. The game is full of these themes. You're moving away from the city, from a soulless corporate job that doesn't take care of you, to a farm where you can work with your hands and have a more peaceful life. You're encouraged to recycle, to buy local, to support people, to build connections and help others, to help take down and fight against a mega corporation in your area and really contribute to the local community. I want to see how much I can stretch these connections by playing like I would want to live without all the real life stress of having to afford my home and eat every day. How self-sufficient can I really be in Stardew Valley? Hi, I'm Clover. Welcome to my channel. My rules for this are pretty simple. If I can get a hold of something through any other method, I can't buy it. For things like seeds that I can get through a seed maker or animals I can incubate or that can get pregnant, I can buy my first one to ensure that I will be able to do that, but no more. Second, I can't use anything Joja. Third, no throwing anything out. And finally, if it's physically possible for me to do a quest in the time frame allowed, I have to accept it. I'm also setting my profit margins at 25% to make it even more realistic. I'll introduce you to all of the different rules for items and shops as we get there, but for now, it's day one, and that means planting. So normally after I plant my parsnips, I'd go into town, buy a whole bunch of seeds, meet some people, and really get my farming going. But I can't exactly do that this time. See, most plants in Stardew can be randomly acquired in skull caverns as rewards for quests or friendships or artifacts or through random seeds. Other ones can come through the seed maker, which means that you do have to buy an initial one. But once you have that initial one, for the purposes of this challenge, I can't really buy any more because it is theoretically possible to get a hold of them. That means I can't really buy anything right now, and the only route for me to get anything right now is random seeds. So today is mostly going to be farm clearing, trying to get a hold of all of those different random seeds possible so that I get the biggest farm possible at the very beginning. Some of the things you get from random seeds take quite a while to grow, like cauliflower, and I'm probably going to need that for the farming bundle. Random seeds are really going to be one of the backbones of this challenge, at least at the beginning, because it takes until level 9 for a seed maker. And look, after just going around my farm, I have enough for almost three full sets of nine seeds. I'm also going to really focus on getting a chest system set up, because with not being allowed to throw anything out, I'm going to run out of storage space really fast. And I'm already almost out of energy, but I have enough wood for one chest. Time to go foraging and meet people. I think one of my main goals for this first episode will be to get one friendship to two hearts. It's not a lot, but it'll be a good start on really becoming part of the community. So Piers. At Piers store, there's a whole bunch of seeds and different things, obviously, but all of these different saplings you can find in Skull Caverns randomly, most of the seeds you can find through random seeds or Skull Caverns, most of these food products you can make. So the only things I can really buy from here in spring are blue jazz seeds, and I can only buy one, tulip seeds, and I can only buy one, the grass starter recipe, and vinegar. I can also buy wallpaper and flooring and the catalog, but those are not going to be my first priorities given how little money I have. So I am actually going to buy my one jazz seed and one tulip bulb right now, just so that I don't forget that I can buy them. And this is really all the use I have for peers for spring. Who is the hardest person for you to meet for this initial quest? For me, it's always Sebastian, because he's in his room most of the time and I can never remember his schedule. I can generally, like, guess other people's schedule, but not him. I always end up having to look it up. 
The plus side of having to gather all of my seeds myself at the beginning is that I'm never going to run out of fiber. Not a bad foraging run for the first day. I am going to save one of each of these just in case I need it for the community center, but I'm going to sell the rest. Twelve more people to meet. Perfect time to go do it all. Ooh, a request, and I can definitely do that. When it comes to Gus's saloon, the only things I can really buy are recipes, because everything else you can make it. The museum artifacts are going to be another very important thing for me to do, because you can get seeds as rewards for doing them. So when it comes to willies, I would really like to buy a better fishing rod, but I got one for free, so I can't do that. He also sells bait and tackle for fishing rods, which I can make, so I can't buy that. The only things I can really buy from him are the different fish tanks, because I do not have a way of getting a hold of them, to the best of my knowledge, without actually buying them. Beds, I get one for free, I shouldn't buy that. I did not- n this is a river fish, why- why did I fish it up in the ocean? Stardew, are you okay? You ate one of my crops, and I can't make a scarecrow yet. That is so rude. Do you have any idea how few crops I have? They aren't for crows. How about some nice foraging and presents for Haley? Presents. She wanted green algae. I don't know why, but sure, maybe it's a face mask. Maybe she wants it for some sort of, like, fancy face mask thing. I'm already at a heart with Haley. I guess I might as well give her presents. Ooh, another request. An eel. I think that needs rain, and it's going to be sunny tomorrow, so I can't do that, but I'll accept the quest just in case. Haley, have a flower. Oh good, she likes those. I'm always pleased when I remember what somebody likes correctly. I have such a bad memory. I think I will also try to repair this bridge this episode, because it's such a simple request. It only needs 300 wood, but it's very meaningful. It opens up a whole other area for the town. I, I love that they included the legal code and that there's a special amendment for Jojico. That's so real. 19. Not bad. I'm going to save five of them so that I have some in case there's requests or I need a sudden gift or I want to make a recipe and I don't get any more parsnips for some reason growing. I'm sorry, Willie. It hasn't rained. I don't think I can get you an eel, but I can now go to the mines. So that's what I'm going to do today. Yay, I have the worst sword in existence. That is so much better than trying to use my scythe. So many slimes. Oh. Yes, I can use the bomb. Ha. A scroll. I have before gotten to year three of a playthrough without all four scrolls, so I really hope that doesn't happen this time. It was so annoying. Oh no! And I can't. Oh, that's so sad. I have to miss out on Amethyst on day five, level nine, because I don't have space and I can't get rid of the slime. Another Amethyst! That's so mean. That's so mean. What's your favorite kind of weapon? I'm not a big fan of daggers, but... If it's better than what I have, I'll use it. I prefer swords. 
I like the extra reach. And the knockback is super handy. Plus, I'm uh, very bad at aiming, so the wide arc it makes, I can usually hit something. Not always. Sometimes I still miss very badly and it's embarrassing. But usually I can hit something. The topaz. Okay. Oh, the community center. Ooh, a request. What do you want? Elliot, I don't think I will have a potato ready by tomorrow, but I can try. I can't exactly control it. Ooh, a reward. Seeds! The best reward. Now you might be wondering, Clover, why didn't you bring all of your geodes with you? You have like six or more right now. Well, it's possible to get a geode crusher, so I'm not paying for Clint to do them. And it's going to just take up so much of my storage. But, you know, that happens sometimes when you're trying to not spend any money. That's one of the ones that I debated over, because for tools, I'm going to have to get them from Clint. Like, I'm going to have to spend money at the shop anyway, because there's no way to get to get upgrades otherwise in Vanilla Stardew. And you need upgrades to access all different areas and, like, actually complete different bundles. Unfortunately, geodes, you can get a hold of them. Same with, like, any materials from a shop or from Robins. You can get a hold of them other ways, so I'll just have to wait. I love how I chose to dress my character in a white shirt, long sleeve shirt, and blue overalls. Like, I'm not going to spend every single day outside on a farm getting my hands dirty planting things, getting sweaty fishing or mining or chopping down trees. Like, if this was real, this outfit would be dirty so fast. It would be disgusting. And yet I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's cute. I should wear that. That's clover. That's not, that's really not a good outfit for a farmer, even if it is cute. Only one potato. Okay, I need to save this tulip. There's very few things I can buy from the traveling merchant because most of them are things you can make or get yourself. The exception is like furniture and rare seed. Unfortunately, I'm not going to spend a thousand gold on a rare seed right now when I barely have 1700. Time for the trippy cutscene. I think the XP from having harvested all of these forage items, all 30 of these, is going to be better for me than the money from selling the seeds. Because if I get enough forage XP, I'm going to be able to get like double forage and higher quality forage. And I think that's a bit more important might be the wrong decision, but it's what I'm going with. Time to do my first real piece of good for this community. A bridge! My blue jazz. But I think I'm going to go into the mines once I do some forage. Inventory is already so full. I need to have enough money for strawberries because that's the third seed that I'm able to buy one of in order to grow more. I do not enjoy fighting grubs. Oh, right, shoot. Can I eat anything else? This might not work, but can I place you on the ground? <laughs> yes. That was the most bullshit way to get more inventory space. 
I appreciate you very much, Robin, but I have never in my life used a well, and I don't intend to start now. What I do intend to do is go fishing. How can I reach you? Not like that. Are you out of reach? That's very rude. I have two hearts, so two of my main goals have been achieved. So, my first order of business is tappers. Tappers? Oh my god, my kitty! No, not Dudley. I'm going to name my cat Misty, because she's cute and gray. What do I need to do tappers? Two copper and wood. Well, I have a decent amount of wood. I need more copper and more coal. So to the mines it is at. Oh, I hate these levels. I hate fighting flies. The ice levels are my favorites. Also, just like the music in the ice levels, amazing. No, oh, I want mixed seeds. Alas, it is not meant to be. I hate you evil flies. Stop annoying me. You fly simultaneously too fast and too slow. Am I seriously going to run out of energy? This is the lamest way to not be able to progress in the mines. Okay, I'll take it as a sign to go fishing. An ancient seed! Yes! Oh, I have to donate that to the museum tomorrow. I need more money. Oh look, Robin's axe. That sounds perfect. So if I have to return Robin's axe, the easiest way to spend today would probably be foraging, dropping off the axe, and some more fishing, no matter how much I dislike fishing. But I also need to stop by the museum to drop off the ancient seeds so I can plant that, because that is a major boost. It'll take a whole month for it to grow, but once it's grown, I'm going to have to save one and then I can just sell the rest or turn them into wine or jam once I have those unlocked. And it's going to make so much money. Ooh, so many spring onions. Ancient seeds! Yes. Once I get past the immediate goals of like make money, my main goal is to make enough money to unlock the desert. Because Skull Caverns is going to be my main source of pretty much everything other than animals. So as long as I make enough from like getting a coop, getting a barn, things like that, to get to Skull Caverns, I will have a chance of being able to expand my farm. And obviously, the more I have, the more money I have, the easier it will be to make friends and to make- to actually give gifts that people want to have. I do love all of the facial expressions for fishing, though. It's so cute. The focused concentration, and then like a little bit of glee when you actually succeed at catching one. Smile. Ooh, my first cutscene! Listen, I can't really judge the guy considering I've been going around eating bread from trash cans. Another potato! I think today is going to be another mines day, so that I can start making more tappers as soon as possible. I love you too, kitty. Oh, finally. Ooh, a mushroom. Nice. <laughs> you 
can't get me. I'm so mature. Of maturity. Oh my god. I have missed so many things and the only thing I could consume would kill me. Wait. I bet you're good. If I... This is the silliest thing ever. Aha. A better sword. And I have not ha technically thrown anything out. I simply made an interesting use of it. I'm playing with technicalities. Can you tell I've studied different kinds of law? Cauliflower harvest. Yes. Egg festival. You know, the egg festival isn't my favorite, but it's pretty far up there. I'm not a big fan of the Christianity of it, but also an egg hunt is really fun to do. And I really like seeing all of the different people and how excited they are. Okay, I get one strawberry seed and that is my final spring seed I can buy ever. I could buy more of these because you can't get a hold of them most other ways, but I'm not going to spend the money when I have so little. Gotta talk to everyone. So many people to talk to. I do like that they have people question why there's an egg festival, though. Everybody seems so excited to do it. I'm not sure what route I'm even following because it's definitely not my normal one. We'll see if I lose. Aha. I have to say that this has been pretty successful so far. I want a cute hat. I've gotten a strawberry. My farm is actually reasonably large despite the struggles. And I've started making some friends and actually helping the community in some small ways. So I'm going to call it there for this episode. Next week, I'm going to work on the coop. Thank you so much for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed it. And I'll be posting again same time next week. Bye.